morning, everybody. I have a question to answer for Nerissa. Um, the question is in regards to leg position and the difference between um, haunches in and disengagements. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about first, um, first off, we have to have a foundation before we start thinking about those things. So when we move the shoulders or the fore quarters, when we move the hind quarters or disengagement, we're trying to, we are exaggerating uh, those movements. So we exaggerate to teach and then we refine that to collect. So just kind of depending on who you've been in a clinic with um, and kind of where, where you've learned to disengage, if you've learned from us, um, you might have been told to put your leg way back here, eyes, belly button, leg, rein. And the reason why we're doing that is we want you to sort of have a, a foundation of the, the physics that go behind moving a horse. Now, the first reason why we're going to do a disengagement is to get relaxation. Um, so we have a reset for our horse. Um, we don't use our legs to turn. Because um, if we turn with the hind quarters by putting our legs way back here, our front feet get heavy. So we need to be able to work with having control over disengaging or taking our horse out of flight, which is the purpose of the disengagement first. Um, then we play around with moving the horse's four quarters. So we might have you exaggerate bringing your foot way up here to move the four quarters around. Uh, and it looks a little bit silly. Um, and to some traditional riders, we absolutely, absolutely look mad. And that's okay. But what ends up happening with our leg position is first off, we get lazy. Um, and then we don't move it as far and our horse tends to fill in the gaps, which is not necessarily something I want you to count on um, because I want everything that you do with your horse to be deliberate. So once I've taught a horse, if I've had to exaggerate, to do a disengagement by bringing my leg way back here, I don't want to put my leg way back there. When I put my leg way back there, I put my pelvis in a really silly position. Um, I still want to put my weight on the forehand and I can't have my horse move gracefully. So when we think about doing maneuvers like haunches in um, and, and shoulder exercises um, and all basic suppling exercises, we're actually working with the training scale. So we need rhythm, relaxation, and connection to be able to get those things done. So when you have, when I have you um, employ a disengagement um, and then move the four quarters, which turns into a rollover, what we're actually looking for is rhythm relaxation um, to build connection. Um, when we do a disengagement, we end up sort of resetting the, the dopamine um, adrenaline balance there. Um, and we're trying to keep our horse in a relaxed frame of mind. When our horse is relaxed, the way that I know my horse is really relaxed is I can ride them on a casual rein with rhythm. So when I put those two things together, you're going to see that I get connection. And when I can do this at a walk and a trot, that's when I start thinking about refining my leg position. So let me show you what that rollover looks like. Um, and what you're going to see is I don't move my leg a ton. I move my leg as far as I need to. So we have our four phases, eyes, belly button, leg, rein if I need it. Then we're going to start refining it so maybe I don't move my leg back as far. Um, when I do a disengagement, um, the phases of my disengagement are eyes, shift my ribs, so eyes, belly button, and then I turn my toe out and I bring my heel up, and that causes my horse's hindquarters to move. And that ends up becoming what happens when we're traveling to do haunches in and, and all of the stuff that you're is way too much to talk about in the video, put it, put it that way. Um, so I'm going to go through my rollovers um, and you're going to see that my horse becomes relaxed. And what I'm looking for is to do this enough to have, re have relaxation and then I'm going to talk about refinement a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to start moving my hind quarters. I'm going to bring my four quarters out here. And so my leg comes forward just a little bit to push with my thigh to bring the four quarters around and travel forward. Four quarters around. Now, 
when you can do that and have your horse maintain a rhythm, so a walk is a four beat gait, a trot is a two beat gait, um, and with gated, gated horses you have all sorts of variables, uh, you are going to find a point where your horse doesn't pause as we're shifting from moving the hind quarters to the fore quarters. So that is the rhythm and relaxation that I'm looking for before I start thinking about haunches in. Now, haunches in, shoulder, blah, 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 all of those things just are a matter of how we shape our horse. So once I have rhythm and relaxation on my casual rein through my rollovers, then I get to play with how sensitive my horse is to my leg. At the, by the time that you start working on those things, you don't need to be as exaggerated because your horse is already really responsive and connect, connected to you. Connection being one of the, the most important parts of the training skill, to me at least. So if I have to bring my leg up here to push my horse's shoulder over, or I have to bring my leg back here to push his bum over, um, and I have to really push to get a sideways, my horse is not ready for any of those things yet. Um, but it's actually not that far off if I can at least get my horse to move. So let's talk about phases for the positions that you're going to want. When I want to move my four quarters, I actually think about where my eyes and my belly button go for my focus. and practice and riding it enough to where you're practicing for excellence. So I want to move my horse's shoulders over here. I want her nose tipped this way a little bit. So I'm kind of going to make that shape in my body. Now if I have rhythm and relaxation, my horse is pretty close to prepare, being prepared for this amount of connection. Um, if you watch Bella's face, you can see her ears kind of like develop reliability, connection, um, and most of all, some impulsion issues. Either they're over-impulsive or under-impulsive, um, but those patterns in Module 3 will help you figure that out. So now that I'm going to move my horse's four quarters over, and I want to see if I can do it with refinement, I actually don't want to think about just throwing my leg on. I want to have my position where I want it, where I want to be focused. I want to move her shoulders this way. Now I'm going to put my leg on and I'm going to squeeze with my thigh and I'm going to see if she can figure out that it was the four quarters that I needed to move. Now I'm going to stop exactly where I am and let her have a look and chew. You can see Bella is uh, probably a little more advanced and she's waiting for the next motion. So, Teaching each one of these things at a standstill is going to be one of the first things that you um, do to test out your connection. Um, if it causes your horse to get over impulsive, you need to go back to the patterns. Um, if your horse becomes less sensitive, um, you might need to bring in a stronger aid. Um, or no, I won't say a stronger aid, an additional aid to help them understand. So I can use a stick, I can use strings on my saddle, there's a lot of things that I can do. Um, first off, I'm going to learn to position my body better. So now that we can move the four quarters, with a squeeze of my thigh, if I need that additional wiggle my foot. Now I want to be able to move my horses hind quarters and I don't want to have to compromise my pelvis by bringing my leg back here like you might have learned initially for the disengagement. So eyes, belly button, leg. I'm going to turn my toe out and it just needs to be a little past the halfway mark. As soon as my horse tries to move, I'm going to leave it there. Now I'm going to leave this video there um, and I'm going to do a couple of videos talking about how you can tune up your phases, but these are going to be the first steps that you take to being able to achieve those maneuvers. Um, please feel free to drop us an email, heartfeltgazedn at gmail.com, um, and my phone number is somewhere on the Facebook page if you want to WhatsApp and chat about it. 
I hope that's helpful. Have a great day, guys, um, and we'll see you shortly.